when I was younger and telling people that we were getting on the river was a rarity. People are, you're canoeing on the Tualatin? Like, who does that? We would be the only ones. And now the parks are full, people are on the river. The Tualatin River is a recreational asset. The Tualatin River is a source of drinking water for close to 400,000 people in this basin. After we clean water that people have used, that's where it goes. It goes back to the Tualatin River. The river's healthier today than it's been in generations. In the late 1960s, you could stand across the river. It was so small. The state stepped in and placed a building moratorium on Washington County because there wasn't an adequate level of treatment. And it, frankly, it was a public health crisis. And it was an environmental crisis. This group called the Clean Water for Life Committee helped place an uh, initiative on the ballot in 1970 to unify 26 wastewater treatment plants into a single regional utility. And that passed by two to one. And that was really the first step to the restoration of the river. The other thing that evolved, which is fairly significant, surface water management utility was created. And it, it results in control of erosion from construction sites, also in the treatment of stormwater off of new development and more recently off of existing development. The community recognized that that was an issue in the early 1990s and really made that investment to step in there. And that significantly changed the health of the river too. We go paddling, we see wildlife all the time. I went paddling a couple weeks ago, deer swam across the river in front of us. We saw turtles, we saw the herons and We've seen river otter and mink and uh, all sorts of things on the river. So the utility of the future is really concerned about public health. They're concerned about the welfare of the environment and they're concerned about the people who live within their watersheds. Our industry historically is focused on pipes, pumps, and plants to comply with permits. That's changing restoring the health of this watershed. We can't do it through concrete and steel alone anymore. We decided to work with partners in the basin to augment stream flows and to restore stream canopy to shade the river and protect it from solar radiation. It's had dramatic impact throughout very large sections of the watershed. Doing stuff on a watershed basis was very new. It looked at the bigger picture. It looked at the whole watershed what are all the different stressors, sources, and so on within that? And then what's the best plan for dealing with all of those together? What they have found is that they can actually save ratepayers money by incorporating the green infrastructure, the green approaches. You know, it's financial, it's economic, it's people's health. It's obviously environmental health. It's not only the tangible economic savings, but it's also the other benefits, the social benefits, the connection to nature, the benefits of transformative partnership. The agricultural community is buying into it. We're getting cleaner water. We're getting cooler water. We're stopping erosion. We're filtering chemicals, fertilizer, we're getting better watersheds. We all recognize we have got to protect these natural resources or we're going to lose. It's been helping a lot and it's good for a lot of things for habitat, for fish, for the water. And uh, seeing in the results, it's a big difference. So every time I go there, uh, I'm proud of what we do. Getting together as a big regional family and talking about managing water appropriately for a variety of different uses, that's really what's key. Their business is clean water and maintaining flows in the Tualatin. My business is working with fish and wildlife, and where we connect is in the river. There was a time when treatment plants were designed primarily for removal. Now the concept is that we can actually recover resources like fertilizer. We could recover resources like energy. We can even generate electricity off of that same energy. And it's creating a full circular economy with the wastewater. So no longer is it wastewater, maybe we need to call it a resource water in the future. about 60% of the energy that we need to run this facility. 
So we pay about that. The improvements we need to make in the river today are really the result of behavior change. It's choices that you make at your home. It's choices you make at your business. Partnerships in restoring the Tualatin River watershed is key. We need as many organizations, homeowners, and volunteers as possible to restore this area. Without a region committed to it, we could not do it. Everybody makes a difference. They make a difference in their backyard by what they choose to use to care for their yard or what they choose to plant there. They make a difference with their involvement with their kids and taking them out and connecting them to nature. That's the most important thing is everybody makes a difference. I will definitely continue volunteering. The best feeling of going home today is when we're all muddy and possibly even soaking wet and it's pouring down rain and we walk back by the cars. So everybody gets to see that we're doing something so it might change their mind about the environment and they might want to help out. Could have a ripple effect, somebody going here. It's an environmental issue, it's an economic issue. Water has a tremendous value, not only for fish and wildlife, but for humans for now and for the future.